Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Mars, and this is my review on the TSXW Racer Wheel from Thrustmaster. Now, this wheel is the first product in a partnership with Thrustmaster and Sparco, so this actually comes with a replica one-to-one -one scale of the Sparco P310 competition mod wheel. So this is definitely the highlight, but also the base includes some improvements as well. So some of you have heard of the TSPC racer, which also is somewhat referred to as almost like the T700. And the reason is that is sort of the spiritual successor to the T500RS, which was released, I believe back in 2010 or so. So this base sort of gives the strength of the T500RS as well as the smoothness of a T300RS. And this is a great base. I'll say that. So the base is very smooth, but I will say it is not as smooth as a club sport wheel. The club sport wheel is still by far the smoothest belt drive wheel I've ever driven. This is maybe third behind the CSL Elite. This is a close third though. This is very smooth, but one thing I will mention is you can feel every notch in this wheel. You can feel every notch in the belt. And I have a bit of a theory as to why that's the case. So my theory is that both Fnatic and Thrustmaster use belts, correct? In theory, they should be the same, right? No. So I believe that the belts in the Thrustmaster wheels are laterally ribbed. What I mean by that is the grooves on the belt run perpendicularly to the length of the belt. So that means the grooves would be able to fit in that sort of cog that is in the wheel. And that cog, it's not really the gear drive that you think of. It's just a ring with the grooves. And the grooves in the Thrustmaster belt fit inside the grooves of that ring. And that means you're less prone to belt slipping, but you do feel the notches in the wheel. And the notching isn't bad. When I'm driving, I don't really feel it. But... I just will mention it to you guys. It also makes this slightly louder. So keep that in mind. For Fnatic, I believe the grooves and the ribbing is longitudinal, which means that the grooves run parallel to the belt and then it's attached to the wheel. And I believe because of that, it's smoother and quieter, but it might be slightly more prone to belt slipping. So the question is, what are you looking for? Are you looking for something that's a little less prone to belt slipping? And also you would have the like strength and everything to boot. Or are you looking for that smoothness experience, the quiet wheel? But it might be slightly more prone to belt slipping. I'm not guaranteeing that. Don't quote me on that. I'm just gauging on what I've heard in the forums. But yeah, they use two different technologies for their belt drive. So keep that in mind. But I enjoy the force feedback in the Thrustmaster TSXW. Very quick, very responsive, very strong too. So the force feedback in this gives thumbs up. The wheel, on the other hand, I have some mixed feelings about. I love the feeling of the grips on this wheel. It's wrapped, I believe, in this suede material that it's pretty nice. Note that it can get a little matted under an extended driving. I've likely driven about 25 hours with this wheel, as well as in that 11 hour consecutive live stream I did. I used this wheel exclusively. And another thing to mention is the black suede can get on your hands a bit. I mean, this is just with a little bit of driving. You can see a little bit of black on my hand. So you're definitely going to want to either wear gloves or wash your hands after driving with this. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Fortunately, you can also swap out rims so you could use the 
GTE Ferrari rim. You could use the 599 XX. You could use a Ferrari F1. You can even use older rims such as the T300 RS, the TX rim, the T500 RS rim, or even the TSPC racer rim. So the full ecosystem is supported. Also, you can use shifters. You can use the TH8A shifter with this and it works all right. But back to the rim. The rim, I don't like the buttons on the rim. The buttons, they just don't give that satisfying haptic feedback. The throw on the buttons, I feel is way too short. It's not a satisfying click. Let's see if I can get this to you. Yeah, just not really a satisfying click. And that is in stark contrast to the shifter. Much better in my opinion. And then with the D-pad on the top left, this D-pad is, I think, just totally counterintuitive. It really, it doesn't have that specialized movement of a D-pad. It's very loose, very generic. I found myself having issues navigating with that D-pad. I would have loved to see Thrustmaster just have a conventional D-pad in the rim, but it's just what it could have should have. And bottom line, this is still a good rim. I just, I'm a little miffed by the buttons. And now let's get on to what else comes with this wheel. And that is the T3PA pedal set. And this is going to lead me into one of my gripes with Thrustmaster products for now. I feel Thrustmaster has played it way too safe recently. I know there have been rumors that the load cells in development, but... This wheel and pedal set is $650. The TGT, which also came out, is $800. Both of them come with versions of the T3PA pedals. They are essentially running on the same technology as the T500 pedals, or maybe even if you want to look as far back as the Thrustmaster RGT pedals. They have played it really safe with their pedal tech. I wish there would have been some way for Thrustmaster to really step up their game with the pedals because these pedals are solid. Don't get me wrong. These are decent entry level three pedal sets, but there's nothing above it for the Thrustmaster ecosystem. They pitch this ecosystem really well. They say, yes, it's compatible with all the ecosystems and as of right now, the variety only comes in the way of rims and bases. They still use the same shifter that they've been using for years. They still use the same pedals they've been using for years, albeit with possibly different pedal faces. And in this case, the Thrustmaster TSXW's pedals are visually and functionally identical to the T3PA pedals that I got three years ago. So it just feels like they're playing it too safe with the pedals. I would have loved to see a default set with a load cell. I would love to see some sort of variety in the design, in the tech powering it, because we know they do the T3PA well. We know that. But I would have loved to see something maybe with more customizability. I would have loved to see something as mentioned with the load cell. And I think they're just playing it too safe with their peripherals. But with that being said, let's get on to my pros and cons. So my first pro is the feel of the Sparco rim. The feel of this Sparco rim is great. The cushioning in it is just enough. It's not too mushy, not too hard. It's just right. It really does feel good and I enjoy driving with it. I can drive with this rim for hours on end. The second pro is the force feedback is strong and responsive. The force feedback in this wheel is solid. It does a good job communicating what I want through this wheel. And it's quick. It allows me to catch slides quickly. It gives me good performance. My next pro is the Xbox One compatibility. You're able to play Xbox One titles with this wheel and it works well. It gives you solid performance. It gives you that good gameplay. My next pro, the paddle shifters. Very tactile, very clicky, 
very good in just the feeling and that idea. Of, yep, just shifted gear. And now let's get on to some of my cons. First con, the force feedback feels a little notchier than I would have liked. It's a great feeling force feedback. You don't notice it too much when you're driving, but this also will go in hand. It's a little loud. You are gonna notice the feel of the wheel. You're gonna notice that. And just the notchiness, it might be some, it might be off-putting to some. My next con is the buttons just lack that tactile feel that's satisfying. And I'll also throw in the D-pad just is not satisfying. The navigation with this wheel is unsatisfying. The buttons, I'm not a fan of. The next con, not much in the way of new features. There's nothing like the dash. There's nothing like a load cell. There's nothing in the way of a new feature that truly sets it apart from the other models in the Thrustmaster ecosystem. All it is is a Sparco name and a Sparco replica rim. And that's just all it is in the way of new features over, say, the TX. The next con is your hands will get dirty with this rim over time. If you're driving for an extended period, you are going to notice your hands getting black. You are going to notice the suede material on this wheel getting matted down. So let's get to the big question. Do I recommend this wheel for $650? And unfortunately, I'm going to likely say, wait for a sale. Wait for this wheel to come on sale. Wait for it to maybe drop down to 500. For 500, I could easily recommend this wheel. But for almost $700, that's where it gets a little iffy. That's where I'd say, hold up a minute. Wait for it to come on sale. Wait for this to be a more accessible price. Because this is a solid wheel. It's a solid mid-range wheel. But this is being sold for almost high-end prices. This is getting into CSL Elite. It's getting almost even into club sport wheel territory. And... For this price, are you getting club sport wheel performance? I'm kind of inclined to say no. And it's tough because I enjoy driving with this wheel. I have a lot of fun with it. It's a good feeling wheel. But for the price, I just can't recommend this as a $700 wheel. But all in all, it's a solid offering. It's a solid product. And I'd say wait for it to go on sale and then buy it. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm just saying wait for it to go on sale. And I think this would be a great product for you guys. So yeah, this is a good wheel. It's a good wheel, but for $700, it's not a $700 wheel. So guys, this is my review on the Thrustmaster TSXW racer wheel. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. What do you think about this wheel? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this review, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.